I love Audible. I'm a huge reader, but I always want to read while I'm doing things you're not supposed to be reading while you're doing them, like driving, like walking. <laughs> it can be dangerous, you know? So yeah. I really love to use Audible. Yeah, Audible is great. Um, I have been really interested in this book, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. That's probably going to be my next Audible experience. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love and something new to discover. Try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. Hello and welcome to Watch Our Crap Ends, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me today is the wonderful and hilarious Ronnie Karam. Ronnie, Ronnie, wait, actually, before you say anything, uh, I'm going to need to make sure you have your originals. Do you have your originals? Otherwise, I'm not sure you can do this podcast today. <laughs> um, uh, this show came back with a bang, eh? Below Deck Mid. Yeah. Below Deck Med is back. We're here to, to recap the season premiere. Before we dive into that, video is back with us as well. We weren't able to do it for Roni. Sorry, everyone. We had some technical issues, but now we have video here for Below Deck Med. Um, so go to patreon.com slash watch for and if support on the Crappens on Demand level, you get early access to our videos a week before they go on YouTube, uh, including what we're recording right now. So go check that out. Uh, we also have a weekly bonus episode. We also have Dwell Hello is coming out this week. That's a, that's exclusive to Wondery Plus. And then next week we have Crappy Hour. That's Monday night, 5.30 p.m. on the West Coast, 8.30 p.m. on the East Coast on IG. It's our IG live show. So uh, follow at Watch What Crappens so you can join in. And uh, yeah, let's dive into this big season premiere of what of um, watch what happens of below deck med where wow i can't it's just amazing how many things can go wrong so quickly in on this show yeah well they have this thing on this show where they i mean i guess they have to do pre-production as far as getting everybody hired they don't seem to do a good job of really checking anybody's resume and mm. often they just show up and start shooting immediately i mean i don't know like if you guys aren't willing to pay for another like an extra day to maybe get i don't yeah. know what it is but it's always a clusterfuck and it is so fucking funny especially like below deck sailing you have oh my god the boat's not working <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they didn't check the boat they, yeah i didn't have that and on this one you know whatever happens in this one uh fun times i know so this season opens up on the italian riviera yeah, yeah. It's Italian, so I think we're going to get a lot of opera stuff thrown in yeah. here. We're on the Italian Riviera. Ooh. Wow. And yeah, so we sort of get like that quasi-trailer thing they do at the top of a, of a Below Deck season. So we hear Toomey. Toomey's back. Love Toomey. And she's like, this is my first time as Chief Stew, and I have never come across a crew this crazy, and I don't think I ever will. And then it's just basically two minutes of watching people kiss and fall over. Okay, well, I guess I'll fast forward that part. No, no, a lot of very elaborate. important things <laughs> happening, like Kyle screaming, "You will never control <laughs> me!" Kyle, wow, looks like they marinated Kyle in Kyle juices, and Kyle is coming back times one hundred, which we knew he would. We knew yeah. if you give Kyle a second chance, he is going to come back even more Kyle than he was before, which I'm horrified by and scared of. I have to say. But that being said, I found that considering that Kyle was such a breakout star last year and he's such a big personality, I found that he was actually not a large part of this trailer. I thought he was going to have sort of, 
I thought he'd be like in like half the clips, but he was only in like a few moments. I wonder, does he like make it through the whole season or they just sort of, uh, is he going to really going to shine in the mid season trailer? You know, I hope that they fire his ass. Okay. This guy makes me crazy. I hope he gets fired. And the only time they show him, he's being disgusting. Um, like in this scene where he's screaming at Natalia, you've been a fake ass bitch for my beard from day one. And then the <laughs> next time we see him, he's screaming that you will never control me. And we do see the captain saying right after that line, you're screaming, your lack of respect. I don't want a person like you on board. And I'm hoping that's to Kyle, but I mean, and, who knows? And then we get Natalia saying, Kyle, you're a horrible human. And he says, I could not figure out what he said here. Did he say fed in a shoebox, honey? What did he say? Fit it in a shoebox, honey? Put it in a shoebox, honey. That smile that is from Frank. Frank, I want your smile in a shoebox, honey. Yeah, he does have to say something like, put it in a shoebox, honey. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, or it looks like to be an extremely messy, messy season. These seasons, I feel like Below Deck Sailing um, has, is, Below Deck Sailing was like the Las Vegas season of the real world, where like there was real world before Trishel and real world after Trishel. And, um, you know, before Trishel, when people made out like on the real world, it was like, oh, my God, they made out. And now, like when you get on the real world, the first thing is everyone gets in the hot tub and makes out, you know. And so I feel like Below Deck Sailing was like that trashy Vegas season that came mm -hmm. in. And now everything on Below Deck is all trashy and drunken yeah. all the time. Now I'm they're okay all they all have to have threesomes in a hot tub. After that yeah. one, you know, they all have to have some three, some storyline or something crazy. There's always got to be a white girl who makes twerking her thing. That happens yep. in this preview as well. Below deck casts in general. Please stop it. Please. I mean, I love you. I love your show. We, you need to stop the twerking, guys. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I know. So they're in Genoa, Genoa, <laughs> Italy. Maybe you get some salami. Maybe get some ham. And yeah, in case Porto. you didn't know this is in Italy. Uh, let's watch someone throw up a pizza pie in the air. Catch it. Okay. <laughs> I know. That's, that's Italian. Okay. <laughs> the next shot is Mario running along a pipe, you know, and jumping over a question mark. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, Sandy goes, wow, such a beautiful day to go boarding. Am I right? Me? <sighs> Am I right? She goes, yeah. Genoa is one of the busiest ports in Europe. You know, I actually lived in Genoa for, uh, for a year. It was great because... Uh, it was a year where I kept on saying to people, hey, uh, Genoa, that I live in Genoa? People would laugh all the time. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, I lived I lived there for a year. I still live with Genoa. Well, the, the salami. It's delicious. <laughs> I also lived with a girl named Jenna for a while, but she didn't work out or work or get a job, you know? So I said, Jen, Noah. <laughs> get it? It's really yeah. funny times, you know, Jen, Yeah, Noah. you know, funny Employment. story, you know. You know, uh, the reason why uh, Joao got hired on on, uh, on Below Deck Australia thing is because uh, Captain Jason said, tell me someone that you would love. And I said, well, if it, if a city could be a human, I would hire Genoa. And he thought I said Joao. And, you know, mistakes happen. I get it. You know, you've got all these amazing <laughs> places you can drop anchor here in Genoa. It's an epic, epic experience, brah. But this this season hasn't even started, and it's already a shit show. And here comes Natalia coming down the dock with her very intense, wide open eyes all the time. And she's like, baby, go back. My right. <laughs> My right, everyone. <laughs> and it says... Natalia Temp Chief Steward. So we already know something weird is going on here. So Sandy's like, hey, who is that? Hey, is that my uh, Genoa, Genoa Salami uh, delivery? No? Oh, it's Natalia. Hey, welcome to Genoa. Or as we call her, Genoa Salami in a wig. Pretty much, basically. <laughs> it's a Genoa Salami with glasses and hair. <laughs> Although here we just call it Salams. So, hi. Hi there. And <laughs> when you've lived in Italy for a while, you could just say salams. Yeah, you leave the last eye off for savings. <laughs> uh, so Natalia screams and hugs Kipped in. And she's like, oh, my God, look at you. The white Capri pants are back. Remember when I did that hilarious impersonation of you where I wore little short pants and a wig? But really, that was the entire impersonation. You remember that? <laughs> Do you know it? 
Sorry, it's old habits die hard. You, you come back and it just all floods. Memories floods, floods back, you know? You know? Uh, so she's like, Natalia's like, I'm happy being back on board with you. And I'm so glad that I don't have to work with incompetent people like Kyle. But guess what? <laughs> Kyle's, Kyle's coming, coming back. back. He sure is. He's coming back with double the eyeliner and triple the screaming. So, so that should be fine. I don't know if you it's saw a, the beginning part of this episode, but it's going to be a journey. Okay. It's going to be good. And I hear that there's going to be a charter uh, midway through the season with a gay that has even larger nipples. So get ready for that one, Kyle. <laughs> And I like that Natalie's like, oh, girl, look at me. It's you and me, Captain Sandy. Remember me? We're such girlfriends. And Sandy's just kind of looking her up and down like, hey, uh, I don't really remember you much. <laughs> so uh, yeah. you seem to have a lot of familiarity with me, but uh, <laughs> blacked out, blacked out on you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've actually kind of done two seasons since you because I took over for Captain Lee. So, yeah, it's hard. Oh, yeah. To, yeah, it's like a. I don't even know who you are. It's your sort of, you know, what you look like it's like if where's Waldo decided to, you know, put on a cute little skirt and be bossy for a second, you know, mm -hmm. where's Twerko, you know, that's what I always say. Cause you look just like a girl who used to twerk, but then I saw another girl who used to twerk. Now I'm getting all my twerkers confused. Anyway, the point is I've got a chief stool and a really, really loud gay stool stuck in immigration. What am I supposed to do about that? And then we see Toomey FaceTiming with Kyle. They're on like a three-way FaceTime. And uh, Toomey's like, I've never wanted to be on Italian soil more than now, Captain Cindy. And Captain's like, have you heard anything? And Kyle's like, so bad luck with visa, Cindy. Morocco friend. Toomey's like, I will swim all the way there just to get there in time. And Cindy's like, Hey, hey, I'm not pitting you guys against each other. Whoever gets here, true. Whoever gets here first, I probably will play favorites with all season long. But listen, mm -hmm. it's not a competition to see who can get through immigration first, okay? When it happens, it happens, and you're on board. Mm -hmm. So she's like, okay, but until they do come, let's go back to this scene. Until they do come back on board, guess what? Twerking girl, whose name I don't remember, who seems to be very familiar with me, you're going to be a temp. Okay, you're going to be the temp chief stool. So surely yeah. you won't mind taking all the power on the boat and then handing it over the second <laughs> someone better actually ar live, arrives on board. Am I right? Absolutely. I'm happy. I'm flexible. Okay, good. Because we are going to be starting the season with a bunch of temps. Okay. It's 23 degrees Celsius. 18 Celsius. 13 Celsius. <laughs> six, 62 Fahrenheit. Okay, I think you I think you may have missed miss, misheard what I said there. Sorry, mm -hmm. honey. Okay, well here's your second for now. Her name is Jessica, okay? And Natalie's like, um oh, cocktails, bartending, great to know, great to know, C V, great, 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 great. And what about a third, Captain Sandy? Or should I say, me? me by the wig on and she's like well the, the third is deck really so you're gonna have to teach her stuff her name's also jessica so you're gonna have to teach her that her name is also jessica and there's another jessica so first let's teach both jessicas that they're both jessica okay start there yeah. baby steps everyone here is going to be named jessica just want you to know that <laughs> can we not just wait, hire no. everybody with the same name please wait no wait no is the i thought it was that the third is Jessica, actually no, because this season they're actually having four stews. I there's think there's Jessica be and Jessica, Tumi. right? Well, there's Jessica. And there's, well, the temp is Brooke, though. Oh, the temp is Brooke, but there's all. Isn't there another Jessica? Maybe because I tell you, it took me about 30, 30 <laughs> minutes of this show before I started being able to parse out all the new people. That was really hard this season. Yeah, to anybody new to Below there's... Deck recaps, welcome to the disaster that is us recapping Below Deck. It's going to be six weeks before we get names right, okay? They change it yeah. too much. This is a big cast because it's a big boat. And so there's um, the the stews are, are going to be Toomey, Kyle, Natalia, and Jessica. And then the deck is, I don't even know what's going on with the deck. I don't even know if half those people are even going to, are even employed. They're just like random people on this deck <laughs> shambling things. There's Haley. Haley, who um, is from like Philadelphia. And you know she's from Philadelphia because she looks literally like Cream cheese. the mayor of Easttown. What's her friend's name again? You know? <laughs> Cream Cheese McCream. Cream Cheese She literally looks like Julie, Julie, whatever her name is. Um, and then I you got remember. Lara. Yeah, it would have been a, it would have been a much more salient reference if I could actually <laughs> reference it. 
I don't remember. That's too long ago. She won the Emmy. Remember yeah, she played. Kidding. Remember Mayor of East Town's life friend, who was just sort of had bangs and the like, neighbor had a tough life. The neighbor who was like the best friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she won an Emmy. Good for her. Hey, congrats. Okay. Hey, congrats. If anyone knows that lady, tell her. <laughs> hey, I think her name is Juliet Nicholson or something like that. But now she works on Below Deck, as, and her name is Haley now. <laughs> She's like, well, you know what? Life's not necessarily easy just because you win an Emmy. I'm going to go ahead and chamois. You still got to yeah. work. You know, we're on strike. <laughs> um, okay, so were you going to list more people? I got tired. I'm tired of listening. Her to name you. is Just Julianne tell me when Nicholson. You're done listing. Julianne, Julianne Nicholson. Nicholson. Okay. Nicholson. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of people. So uh, Natalia is like, personally, I think I'll do better than anyone else that comes in. Last season, Tish gave me some PTSD, and then we get a we cut to that. Uh, Oh, no, we don't cut to that. She just does an impersonation of her where she goes, Natalia no, wants me job. We, we do see a little bit of, of Tasha going, saying like, don't yell at me, Natalia. <laughs> don't raise your voice at me, Dave. Did you say something, Dave? Uh, Captain Cindy and I are close, so I'd like to think I was the first option, but this has worked out, you know, this has worked out now. So then we go to Jack, who's a tiny oh, chef in a go. Newsies hat. Uh-oh. Okay, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, Ben and Ronnie attempt a Liverpool accents <laughs> for the next 14 weeks of your lives. Enjoy. <laughs> I, I, like, last night I was great at it, but we always know. I was like, never great at it's it, like, and I'm telling you I will never be great at it. It's like singing in the shower. When I'm home on my sofa alone, oh, I'm like killing with all the accents. You know, it's like I'm singing. But now I'm here on the karaoke stage. And I'm like, hi, hey, 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 hello, my name is Jack. I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> it's actually not that inaccurate now that I think about it. <laughs> he had a very strong foundation in French cooking. My oh, forte is sauce. <laughs> yeah. My forte is sauce. I've been chef in 13 years, but I've been, you know what? I've filled that 13 years. I didn't stop working. I traveled to Asia for three years. I didn't stop working in Asia. Then I came back from Asia. Guess where I didn't do? I went to Asian food. And, and back in Liverpool, didn't stop working even when I was eating Asian food. It's crazy. Crazy as the light goes. The initial, re the initial reason to be a chef was to travel. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't really have the best diet growing up. Frozen meals and stuff. I don't think I tried a vegetable until I was 16 and to this day, if you like vegetables, if you genuinely say you like broccoli and you like it, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> well, that explains the picture they show of your food, which is a smashed piece of salmon, like a really thinly smashed and overly cooked piece of salmon. And then one, sl one little chunk of cucumber. It's like one little tiny square of it. And then a very long slice of cucumber that's rolled up. It's like, wow, this guy definitely hates his vegetables. His, his vegetables. vegetables. So more people come on board. Um, and uh, Natalia meets Jack, the chef. And then um, Natalia, Ron. she's like, oh, I'm the temporary chief stew, but you can just call me the chief stew because I'll probably be the chief stew the whole yeah. season if you really think about it. So just call me Ch chiefy. You know how I'll call you chef You can call me chiefy. <laughs> um, no, I'm not Captain Sandy. We're just, we're just twins, basically. And guys, mm -hmm. you should go meet her. Well, I'll be down here temping. And, well, you know what? Let's only call me your temp temporarily. That would be nice. <laughs> so then Ruan comes on. His name is Ron Irving. And he's a debt guy. Uh, he's a balding big guy with a dorky smile. And I wrote fishy. That was my first wow. about him. Already he's fishy. He's very like, huh, huh, duh, duh, duh. and the captain's like, so, you, wow, you did a tender during 10 to 15, 10 or 15 foot swells. He's like, breaking waves are just rolling. She's like, wow. No, she says, breaking waves are just rolling. He goes, breaking. Yeah, yeah. Breaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I definitely not breaking. Waves. Yeah, I know. I was doing. I was doing waves. I broke a wave. I was, Immediately, I was, and I was watching the movie Breaking the Waves. Great movie. So dramatic. But I was doing that. I seen it. Uh, I totally I seen he it. takes off his glasses, and he has a dead, dumb look in his eyes. Nods dumbly. That's, he looks like a salmon. Impression. You know, he looked like a salmon. I don't know if you've ever seen a salmon's face before, but he literally has salmon face. Hold on, let me look up face. Look of up a salmon. salmon. Hold okay, on. face of a. Salmon. salmon face. Okay. Salmons have a specific... There's a certain type of... <laughs> do you see? They're very long trouted and they have a hook. They have, like a they hook, have on the bottom. hook nose and hook chins? They have... They're, they're, yeah. 
He sort of, if you look at his face, the nose and the chin come up towards each other a little bit. He just sort of has like a certain salmon quality to himself. But he's not colored salmon. He's just like, he's not like pink. Just that his face is like, look. So uh, he's like, Wait, I've been okay, in Boston for picture. three you years now. <laughs> what? I'm sending you a picture and you tell me that this is not him scuffling with other salmons. Okay. okay. I'm going to send this to you. I'm okay. going to look okay. for it. Okay. Here it comes. Here it comes with some vegetables. Okay. <laughs> as long as it doesn't come with broccoli. <laughs> okay, I just sent it to you. The one on the left, like that's him. He literally that is, is a hilarious salmon. and horrible at the same time. Also, for to both them, to both him and to the salmon, that's not nice. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. Hey, listeners, you need to know that Wondery's shocking true crime podcast over my dead body is back for a fourth season. Gone hunting. This newest season covers the story of Mike Williams. It was Mike's sixth wedding anniversary when he set off on a hunting trip into the gator-infested swamps of North Florida. He figured he'd be back in time to take his wife Denise out to celebrate, but he never came back. Friends and loved ones feared he met his fate through bad luck and a group of hungry alligators, leaving his young family behind. Except that's not what happened at all. And after 17 years, a kidnapping, and the uncovering of a secret love triangle, the truth would finally be revealed. Enjoy Over My Dead Body, Gone Hunting on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Over My Dead Body early and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Get started with your free trial at wondery.com slash plus. I want you to picture Steve Jobs tinkering with a computer in his garage, Walt Disney drawing cartoons for his high school newspaper. Every big moment starts with a big dream, but what happens when that dream turns out to be an even bigger failure? Each week on Wondery's new podcast, The Big Flop, host Misha Brown is joined by different comedians to chronicle some of the biggest failures and blunders in pop culture history. Each episode will have you thinking, why in the world did this get made? From box office flops like Cats the Movie to Action Park, New Jersey's infamous theme park that had countless injuries, many lawsuits, and rides so wild it became known as Class Action Park. Or Quibi, that short-form video platform with an even shorter lifespan. It's a story of a spectacular failure with lots of surprises along the way. Enjoy The Big Flop on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to The Big Flop early and ad-free on Wondery Plus. Get started with your free trial at wondery.com slash plus. Okay, so let's go to Ron. So he's like, I've been in Boston for three years now. I'm from a small town in South Africa. And you know what? We just spear fishing. That's how I made my money. I'm 100% a sea baby. The old saying, a smooth sea never made good sailor. Yeah, I got it, Ron. He goes, yeah, because you know why? Because that's where you grow. Yeah, we know what it means. We, Ron. we should have known, by the way, we should have known he was not going to last more than one episode on the show because when he did this next line, I was like, wow, that was a lot of information. He goes, yeah, I ran away from home super young and I dropped out of school at 16 and grew up in an abusive home. Alcoholic, just a statistic. No one cares. I know where I came from. I know where I'm going to go and I have to take my shit seriously. Also, when I was 13, I lost my puppy. And then when I was 15, I had a girlfriend. And when I was 17, I had a child. Missed the child. They're in Florida somewhere. Anyway, that's my entire story. And you need me for anything else this season? Okay, boy. Uh, addicted to, to drugs. Had a child. Missed the child. Don't only need me. the child. Child might be addicted. To, am I addicted to the child? Or is, the chi is that a drug? It's being addicted to children. It's like, okay, you're out. You've run through all your trauma, <laughs> sir. <laughs> he just dropped everything in one paragraph. <laughs> and really the first did. time we ever saw him. My note is, are you high, sir? Because you seem high. You're coming across as very high. So then uh, he goes and hugs Natalia, and he's like, call me Rue. Which, you know, my nickname as a child was Ruli. Ruli Don du Ruli Don Dooley. Ruli. Ron Don Dooley really was my nickname. Ron so Don I hear Rue, and I'm like, hey, wait a minute. So Natalia is like, uh, we need Jesus at this point. There's a lot There's a lot to do here, right? Now. Oh, my God, these accents. My bad accents are all clashing up against each other. It's know, the Tower it's of getting... Bad Accent Babble. Okay, the tower's gonna fall, yeah. guys. The, it, we're, it's 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 wild. So um, then Jessica, who's the temporary second stew, but I think is gonna be the fourth stew ultimately when everything shakes out. So she's on board, and then somebody named Lara comes on board. And by the way, we haven't even gotten to Lara's accent. I don't even know how. That's just gonna be a disaster as well. 
So then, then we see Rue dancing by himself in his room. He's like uh, not aware there's cameras because it's like his first day when he should be the most self-conscious of cameras everywhere. And he's like doing some sort of like Martha Graham weird stuff like well, he's like doing, doing something like beatboxing. He's shirtless and he's like beatboxing in the mirror and like dancing um, spastically. I don't know how you would explain it. So then um, little Laura comes in and um, they, they all start cleaning. And I wrote tiny voice, big teeth, Haley meets root. Tiny voice, big teeth. That's so Julianne guessing- Nicholson. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's a good call. She does look like her now that I see her talking about uh, saying, hi, my name is Hayley. How are you guys? So then uh, Luca, I mean, so many people are coming on, right? So Lara's like, it's kind of Lage Mage boat, isn't it? Lage Mage. This is kind of Lage Mage. What is it? I'm Lara. I'm from South Africa, so I've got a South African accent, but I also Lage have Mage. just some other strange accent that makes is not, not accounted for because I speak too like this a little bit. I want to see you know, see me, but... I don't know so, what well, I don't know what's going on with Lara. I don't know I what don't that actor is yeah. doing. So then yeah. the captain meets Luca, and she's like, "Oh wow! So what was it like, Luca? You handsome person working for Captain Jason must have been fun. You coming back with a pearl necklace and all, huh? They just pass you around hey. like a tray over there, because wow, look at you, Harry Styles. <laughs> Good one. Look at hey. you, Machine Gun Kelly. Wow, you look great. I guess when when did you get out of traction? I just assume." that there was probably some sort of horrific yacht accident because it was Captain Jason. So you're okay? You can work? So are you going to show me your resume or are you wearing it around your neck, pearl necklace? Huh? Come on. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, before walking with Captain Jason, I was on two other boats that were both private. I'm actually an ETO, an electrical engineer, but I like being on deck because engineers are grumpy. And I'm not grumpy. I want to have fun. <laughs> Which is much, so then- that's a much lighter and happier uh backstory than rue of like and then when i was 12 years old i uh accidentally lit fire to a llama and i was put in jail for three months and juvenile detention <laughs> on accidental llama ignition. I, don't, I don't know just, so just natalia's meets luca and she's <laughs> like oh my god are you from new zealand i'm from australia we're related <gasps> luca's just these eyes oh my god these eyes it's like balinese you know, scooter boy, I don't know, surfer, mixed with God. He's so hot. Oh, my God. <laughs> All he's missing is a little cap on his head that makes him look like the hamburger. <laughs> no, that's just, I guess, a regular burger. The, the hamburger actually wore kind of a top hat sort of thing. But regular burglars in cartoons where there's little knit cap penis head type things. You know what I mean. Luke is harder than the last one is what I'm trying to say. I'm pretty sure the Hamburglar wears some sort of variation of a Kyle Richards hat, now that I think about it. Kind of. But it's also one of those kind of flat Amish black hats. Am I right? Oh, you're right, Kyle Richards at the tea party. You know what? If you're gonna be if you're gonna be robbing people of their burgers, don't wear a flashy accessory. Okay? Mm -hmm. Makes people remember you. Yeah. So Rue shows them the chamois closet and Haley's like, Um, I don't think I've ever used a chamois. And she's got, she's also got this like little spirit keeper hippie type necklace on her chest, like the one that Ursula used to contain the Little Mermaid's voice. So watch out for Haley. She's asleep. I know. Lara's like, "How long have you been a shiphead? Ship, ship? Have you been on ships before?" And Haley's like, "Um, I've been basically like a deckhand on ships and like tugs and stuff, but like yachting, I don't really know. And like when I say I was like a deckhand, I'm like a tug." I basically played tug of war once, and so that was fun. Yeah, you know, um, my dad wanted a son, and he did everything in his power to make sure I was a boy. Like soccer, basketball, rugby. That's why I'm on boats, because you work for one month, and then you go home and drink beers. Sounds fun to me. Uh, Excuse (laughs) me. (laughs) I'm such a tomboy. So um, now we have an MCA Great casting, inspector. by the way. I don't know how long this chick is going to last, but great casting. I was dying she laughing. She is so she funny. never used a chamois before. This is <laughs> a new low. So uh, the MCA inspector has come on board. He's from the Maritime Coast Guard Agency. And oh. um, yeah. wow, that's yeah, pretty good. Here. You know yeah. my good friend, Mary? Who, who then? Mary Tangla. 
Come in. Let's talk to her. So this season, this season is completely different, guys. Setting off, you know what? 989 gross tons. That's a huge adjustment for me. Because this is a commercial built vessel. And we're in a whole different ball game. Plus, we're in a major port. Plus, it's so highly regulated. Plus, there's an MCA investor on board at any time. It's their job to make sure we're safe. Plus, oh my God, so much addition. What am I even a captain anymore? Also, don't forget that this boat was a 1977 Japanese fishing <laughs> troll. Get out of here, okay? It's not those lies. It's not. So, so MCA is going through paperwork, and guess what? There's a paperwork problem with rule, rule to the bridge, rule, rule, rule to the bridge. Oh my hey, gosh! Rue, you better get up here. You better get up here because I gotta say something. Wait, but hold on, though. You gotta hydrate. Don't forget to hydrate and then nap. Okay, continue on. Yeah, you know what? Are you feeling okay? You're hot? Okay, I'm going to need your tongue to give hugs to a glass with some water in it, okay? Because you need to be hydrated there, buddy, okay? God, I love inspiring people. You know, you, there's so much to learn on these boats. Hydration. Okay, hey, where are your originals? Your originals. He's like, oh, he's like, uh, 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 what, the, uh, what? The, uh, I keep them in a safe at home, so I made certified copies by the police station at home, so that's where they are. And uh, the guy's like, uh, no, they're not. These aren't certified. These are photocopies of a certified copy. So nice try. Do I look like a stupid? Do I look like the inspector of stupid things that falls for things? <laughs> no. And the inspector's like, well, the reality is you should always have your originals. The boat could be detained for that. Okay. And he's like, uh, he's like, oh, no, I, it's not something I ever had to do. And she's like, well, that's a problem. We, we could all be detained. And, you know, it's one thing for us to, you know, I want everyone to take na na naps and hugs, but you want to do it on your own accord. You don't want it to be forced on us. Okay. We don't want this boat to be in a giant forced nap by the uh, Mr. MCA over here. Okay. But so, you could get someone to send you the paperwork, right? And he's like, well, you know, it's uh, tricky because uh, uh, mm, I don't have family or anything. So my car is at this friend's house and uh, this and that, this and that. You know, I've been at France for eight years straight. So those papers are at a friend's house in Cape Town. And uh, they're like, no, you're going to need to get your paperwork, this fishy, fishy guy. You know what? In, in moments like that, just say, yes, I'll work on it because... That was such a fishy answer. So you've been living in France for eight years, but the safe with the important stuff is in South Africa, but you've only been to South Africa for three months in the past eight years. So why is your important stuff down there? If you, is your primary residence in France, why is this so difficult? Why do you not bring this stuff with you? Yeah. So the captain's like, okay, so what are you saying, Italian MCA? If we don't get this in five days, you're going to need a new bosun. It's like, oh, don't, don't, don't. So now uh, Natalia is telling Jessica about towels, like what to do with them. And Jessica's like, I find comfort in people. It's like, who's going to be my friend? You know, because I grew up in Hawaii. <laughs> Transition. <laughs> I grew up in Hawaii and I was always at my best friend's house. And that's when I learned about friends. And they show a picture of her with like a turtle. I was like, is your friend a turtle? <laughs> 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 my best friend. I just follow whatever she says. If she wants to go eat leaves, I eat leaves. If she wants to go swimming in the lake, I swim in the lake. If she wants to lay some eggs in the driveway, I lay eggs in the driveway. I'm just a follower. You know what? Sometimes she's low on patient and she snaps. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? She's still my best friend. She was very much a leader. She was like, we're going to go out and we're going to do this. Or we're going to go out and we're going to do that. And then I would be like, okay, because I was very comfortable in that situation. That's why I'm a strong second. I'm a strong follower. I get into toxic relationships with friends. <laughs> So. <laughs> I'm a good follower, even though sometimes I do accidentally step on the back of my best friend's shell because she moves so slowly. But honestly, it's just because I'm tall. Um, You know, her best friend is a nightmare. Okay, I'm going to assume her name is Marnie. And Marnie's like, okay, Jessica, guess what? We're going to the mall today. <laughs> Great, I'm excited. Stupid, I can't believe you fell for that. <laughs> We're going to Starbies. Uh, so Natalia's like, hello, I'm Natalia. I'm the chief. I'm the, the temporary chief stew. And she's like, oh, wait, so they're going to switch you out later? Like, you're not going to be chief stew? She goes, no. You know what? The chief stew isn't responsible enough to get a visa. So um, I was like, I can fly out there tomorrow. I'll be right. The year. <laughs> and then meanwhile, Rue is telling the deckies he's complaining about the situation and he's like, 
I mean, eight years I've never been taken to this, never never had to take my original certificate on any boat I've ever been on, not even the one where I boarded wearing a top hat and glasses and a mustache and said, no, but I'm actually a passenger, I'm a passenger, I don't work here, and then they took it off and I said, okay, you got me, I work here. I never had to have my originals. Normally, I, I just, uh, I come onto the boat in the same way that, you know, always, like in somebody else's suitcase, and then once the boat is going on the water, I come out and I say, look, it's me, surprise! And then I get paycheck, so I'm not really sure. And Luca's like, uh, yeah, I've always taken my originals, so not really heard of anybody just walking around. No, 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 you know, crayon, you use a crayon, then you put on the paper. No, no, yeah, I bring my originals, normally. <laughs> this guy's a con artist, right? <laughs> right. So then, uh, meanwhile, Natalia and Jessica are cleaning, and Jessica's like, oh my god, I love seeing the dust. And Natalia says, yeah, just the way it like, fizzles, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, she's like, you were not supposed to yes and me, you're supposed to correct me, and I was supposed to say, you're right. Okay, can we start that from the top? I'm very uncomfortable with spearheading this conversation right now. So now Laura and Haley are talking, and Haley's like, what made you want to start doing boats? <laughs> and Laura's like, I like surfing and stuff, so I want to be a captain, you know, that's what I'm going to do sometime in my life. And then we get her story. She's like, I grew up on a farm in South Africa. My family is so conservative. Like, if I say fuck, my mom is, like, crying about it. My favorite memory on a farm was cattle, moving them to stables to get milked. And I don't know why, but they just love to shit different colors they shit light green dark green dark brown light brown it's amazing we used to run into it we used to dive into the shit and just play it's so warm and so nice <laughs> what the hell? and they just pull up some stock footage of manure <laughs> And the producer is like, well, there's a lot of bacteria and shit, you know, like E. coli. She goes, oh, I mean, we wouldn't open my mouth and put it in any holes, you know, because at that age, you wouldn't care. I mean, now I would care. I wouldn't do it now. Although, mm -hmm. I would drunk enough. Drunk I would enough. Do it. Yeah, I do it ha -ha, I was drunk. Ha -ha, ha -ha. Ha -ha. <laughs> so the captain is checking on the stews and stuff, and she's talking to Natalia, and she's like, okay, we've assigned the two females together, and then old room with my man, Kyle. Oh, right, Kyle, Kyle. So what happened to Storm then? Well, you know, that's that's the guy in the burglar hat that you dated before. Now I remember you. And uh, Nat's like, well, naturally, fell apart. He's got a girlfriend now. Unfortunately, he didn't tell me until we ordered dessert on Valentine's Day. And then he left before the check came. <laughs> Just keeps happening. Yeah, but you know what? I met someone now and we started a thing together and he wants an open relationship. He, well, at least he said that I'm his temporary girlfriend, I guess. I don't know. I'm sort of struggling with this concept. <laughs> no, for so, real. She can't get out of the temp slot. That's she, a good point. She really is a temp. So Sandy's like, oh, so open open relationship is, is dating others. It's being free to hug lots of different people. And she goes, <laughs> no, it's not that. It's, you know. It's like this, and she starts doing like the banging thing. Yeah. Like the banging the gesture, finger and the whole you know? thing. <laughs> oh, so like, okay. So, and then we go to Rue. Then we go to Rue, which I, we don't even know that this is really happening, but it looks like Rue's calling friends, but we don't hear anybody on the other line, which is rare because normally we'll hear like, hey man, what can I do? But not on this one. We just see him. I think he's pretending to call friends. Well, it point. says that he's leaving a voice memo. On, on screen. Well, never so. mind. Okay, just shot that one right out of the water. Okay, I'm just your temporary capper here, everybody. Don't worry. Hey, that was a good temporary theory, but uh, it did say on screen, vo leaving a voice memo. So that lasted about you know. as long as a brook. So that was fun. Um, I like so I like the idea that he's leaving. He's doing fake phone calls though. Like his con is that deep. So. We've all done it. Oh, well, you know he might still mean? might be. Why don't you? Why don't you conspiracy theory it up? Maybe that he's telling producers he left a voice memo, but he's just speaking into a. Yeah, headphone. I didn't hear anybody going like, "Hey, leave me a message. I'll be back." Bleep. Nothing like that. You just hear him talking. So who really knows? Okay. Well, also fuck him for leaving voice memos. Like I'm so glad who that Apple that? finally is is um, allowing for tr voice memo transcripts because oh my god, when you have to sit there for two minutes. To listen to someone prattle on. It's just not fair. Um, yeah. Okay. Go on. You go yeah. on. Okay. So um, 
Yeah, so now, uh, so he leaves, basically he's leaving a uh, voice memo for his friend to be like, hey, can you uh, get my uh, originals that are definitely in the safe that I have in, a, in that place? Because I definitely have a safe somewhere, I think. Maybe I last saw it eight years ago. Okay, go, yeah, that, thanks so much. Mm-hmm. And then there's provisions. And um, uh, Lara has, she's like stacked four crates. And she's like bringing four crates at once. And Sandy goes, oh, look at her. Showing off, huh? Wow. Hydrate. Don't forget to hydrate. Have you heard of water before? Because you should drink it. Okay, just t- just checking. And then we check in with Todd because provisions are coming in. He's the chef. And he's like, every job I've had at first, I've been nervous. As a baby, I couldn't look people in the eye or anything. Up until about eight years old, I was like a zombie. And then they show a picture of this kid like, oh. and he does that. He's like, oh. and he goes, and ever since I woke up, I haven't stopped yapping since then. Ever since. <laughs> That's got to be my favorite backstory of all time. He was just a zombie until he was eight and suddenly woke up. <laughs> Yeah, between I was a zombie until I was eight and then I became, you know, self-aware versus I used to just run and play around in feces. I don't know. We got a lot of really colorful (laughs) variations on the typical backstories here. (laughs) So uh, now, um, yeah, and now like a fake Carrie Underwood type comes on the boat. Her name is Brooke and she's in from Miami and she's going to be the temporary third stew. And she says she's not usually a stewardess. What? Yeah. Sorry, Ben. A lot of Americans. I was just saying on the side. A lot of Americans. A lot of Americans. (laughs) Do you know it? So she Mm -hmm. says that she's not normally a stewardess, but she's usually a deckhand on smaller sailboats and yachts. And uh, she's never been on something this big before. And she's excited, but she's also shitting her pants. Yeah. She's like, what? I'm shitting my pants. Well, at least... (laughs) I don't know. It's going to do something Laura pooping. But I'm not Laura, really in the mood. I'm Laura's really in the like, mood to go hold on, let me mouth. get my scuba mask. <laughs> <laughs> so the captain radios the deck crew and she's like, okay, guys, gather around, guys, gather around. What is number rule? What is the number one rule in yachting? Hugs. Okay. What is the number two rule in yachting? Naps. Okay. And number three, distances. Those are important. So let's. Let's call distances, okay? And I'll start. From a distance, the world is dark. Gotta love you, Bette Midler. Okay. (laughs) Okay, how far from this boat to that barge? Okay, Rue, why don't you start? Three feet. Oh. Oh. Why don't you give that another shot? Try to get Uh, another shot. 50 meters? 50 meters. I'm going to say 50 meters. And Luca's like, no. And Laura says, um, 85. And Luca's like, uh, 100, 100 meters. And the captain's like, that's right. That's 100. Good job, Luke. Wow. So I'm a little concerned. Uh, Ru- yeah. Ruan's distance wasn't really even close, okay? Uh, 50 is very different than 100. Yeah, it's a little concerning. I'm starting to, starting to double guess my decision to hire Ru because... He's the first half of the word rules. So maybe not a good idea. Not a good strategy. Uh... Commercials. Here comes one right now. So then so... Luca's like, uh, I can't believe how many chicks are on board. It's so nice. And Laura's, uh, Laura's saying, uh, you know, like, I really don't like the word lesbian. Lesbian sounds horrible. I hate this word lesbian. Like, I hate. Mm-hmm. And then she's talking with Haley and uh, she's like, I hate guys. They stink. And Haley's like, mm-hmm. they do stink. Yeah, and they piss everywhere. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I don't like it when someone comes on to me and is like, are you a lesbian? Like, fuck off. What are you? Um, by the way, I don't think she explicitly says she's a lesbian, but I hope she is because otherwise this is just very homophobic. <laughs> yeah, I think she's saying she's a lesbian, but she hates the word lesbian, right? Yeah. Which I, I don't love the word lesbian either. It is a weird word. I feel like there needs to be a better word. Well, it's funny because, yeah, it, it feels like... So clinical. Uh, it is right? clinical. It's like robotic, lesbian. Yeah, I it's mean, like you're um, classifying not robotic, animal. but yeah, because like theoretically, we're all gay. Like we're all under the umbrella of gay, but it's like lesbian is lesbian. 
gay or is lesbian just lesbian? But I always feel like lesbian is gay. But then gay men are like, no, but we're gay. So you're lesbian. I don't know. It's all the feels world, like we're all gay. I don't know. Can we just all be gay? Yeah, we're all what gay. We Why do gays just all be... get a simple gay, but lesbians have to be like some like encyclopedia? I don't know. Like class of a homo sapien lesbian. It's a very specific <laughs> kind of gay. Okay. Who cares? The so Isle Laura. Lesbos. Yeah. There you go. That's um, what, so Rue's like, yeah. oh, and Haley acting like she's doing it her whole life already. And he's like, yeah, well, maybe I'm just a cleaner. Oh, yeah, do you want to be stewardessing, maybe? And she's like, uh-uh, fuck that. I'm all about shamming, even though I've never done it before today. Well, I'm telling you what, it's really fun shamming right now. Hey, how many how many shammies are we going to have to shammy before we get to go drink a beer together? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a joke about how she's like using the chamois as dental floss or something like that because she's never used it before. But then I was like, it's really hard to actually come up with a fictional use for a chamois that's that's improper because you really can use a chamois on anything and probably even dental floss. Just some thoughts about chamoising. So then um, now, uh, hey, it's time for the crew meeting. OK. Hey, everyone. Welcome on board. It's great to have you. I hope you all get some nice naps and hugs today. We got a lot of women here on deck and one self-hating lesbian. Don't love that. But for me, it's a highlight, you know, and I'm just, you know, I want to get the pleasantries out of the way, even though I guess by me saying, hey, it's great to have you. I guess I didn't really, I sort of just said them. Anyway, <laughs> hey, absolutely no drugs. You can't drink on charter and no racist comments. Okay, because we're at the state on this TV show where we have to explicitly say it because it should be known. But for some reason, you ding dongs keep saying things like that so stop yeah um also i want to introduce our chief officer tony our chief officer nicola and our other chief officer jim jam okay just because i like that name <laughs> don't really remember his name who cares never gonna see them again okay let's rock this guys let's rock it all right yeah everyone get your certificates okay so cleaning clean oh sorry not everyone just you rue ha <laughs> because you're lying to me Okay, so now they're all cleaning. <laughs> cleaning, cleaning. They're so cleaning. Natalia tells Brooke to take stuff downstairs. She's like, Brooke, take stuff downstairs. And Brooke goes, what'd you say? Sorry. She goes, take it downstairs. She's like, what? Down the stairs. I don't, I don't really understand your accent. So I'm pretty... <laughs> oh, do you learn English? That would be great. Take it down the steering? Steers? I don't get it. So uh, now it's time for um, the preference sheet meeting. And so the first client, the first primary is Dr. Kian Karimi. Uh, he is my personal friend and a doctor and my doctor. He's my doctor and my friend, you know, and he turned 40 during the pandemic. And he's excited to celebrate in style three years later. So, you know, let's do it, you know. Yeah, it's an all-boys trip, guys. And Laura's like, oh, stinky. And so they want the water toys out. And uh, they, one birthday, they're going to have Coastal Italian. They want Captain to join. And she's like, I mean, guys, be prepared. And Jack's like, I'm thrown right in the deep end. The deep end of broccoli. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> And she's like, okay, guys, having Keon on board, that's incredible. Okay, let me tell you a story. I went to see Keon years ago because I was in a car crash, okay? It was um, a Kia, which is sort of awkward because I felt like I'd crashed him. But go on. I was just Googling <laughs> Kian. I was just Googling Kia to see why it crashed. I was actually, I was driving my Kia and then Dr. Kian called and I was like, hey, I'm just driving my Kia. Listen, don't take your eyes off the road. That's what I learned. <laughs> And then I was trying to get into the office and he said, I said, I think the door's locked. He said, put your key in. I said, oh my God, are you just trying, you're just, you're just tongue twisting me at this point. I said, you're lying. You're lying. He said, what key? I'm lying. He's like, yeah, you're a key and lion. You're like a key and lion pie right now. Hmm. He didn't get it. Okay. So here's the thing. I was in a car crash mostly because I was trying to drive the car on water. Okay. Because it's very difficult to get used <laughs> and to. I was high on quaaludes too. <laughs> That's not funny because I'm actually sober now. Okay, so you don't get to say that. It's a those past kinds tense reference. Okay, still not great. Past tense. No. Uh, so, 
<laughs> reeling that one back in. Wait, hold on. While I'm no. here crashing this car into the ocean, let me fish and reel that one back in. Come on, back in. No. Quaaludes, Joe. Oh, you thought I said quaaludes. You thought I said yeah. quaaludes. I said I was, I was way eluding an obstacle. <laughs> Way eluding it. <laughs> okay, reeled it and caught it, put it in the net. Okay, so here's the thing. I crashed my car, uh, my Kia, and I was my right eye didn't close all the way. So he took skin from this eye, and then he put it on this eye, and now this eye closes. But also, this eye has a hole in it. So whenever I close my <laughs> I still, I still I call it see. my key and hole. Yeah. <laughs> God, well, that'll teach me not to try to outdrive some Somalian pirates, though. That's for sure. We made quite a mess of that that parkway over there in Kissimmee, Florida. Hmm. Anyway, so... listen, I'll tell you: if you crash into a fireworks store, it does not end well. <laughs> I speak from experience. <laughs> have you okay. ever been to Kissimmee, Florida, Ronnie? I'm sure you have. <laughs> Shut up. Have you been there? You've been there. You shut You've been up. there. You like didn't you? Quit. You've been there. Kissing me. You've been to kiss kissing me. Yeah. No. You know that one street. You ever been to that one street in Kissing Me, Florida? <laughs> <Ain't there. laughs> okay, you haven't been there because if you've been there, you would have no. known the street I'm talking about. No, I don't. They've got a road. There's a road in Kissing Me, Florida. So this is and this it's the conversation with... people actually have. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Anyone has been. Anyone who's every been there? what? Everyone who's been there. Every... I keep interrupting you. I'm just laughing. I'm I'm del- <laughs> I'm delirious at this point. So please, kiss me, Florida. <laughs> it's the craziest road. You drive down the road, and there's like 15 different um, fireworks stores and like gun stores, and like everything's like American flags and like TGIFs and more fireworks. It is like a, this crazy stretch of road. Um, I highly recommend it. It's great. It's okay. a great time. So don't crash uh, your car there because there's a lot of things that can explode off the side. <laughs> Between the ammunition and the fireworks, you know, you just got to aim for the TGI Fridays. And the, the worst is that you wind up covered in some Jack Daniels sauce. God, got a Roman candle right in the kiss of me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Kissimmee. So Bloody let's move Kissimmee. on to a super sad, uh, super sad scene now. Okay. Let's stop laughing because this is not funny. This is very sad. Okay. So now for the sad scene, um, Rue is smoking on the dock. He gets a ding and then he just starts sobbing because he has found out that one of his best friends has died. And so he's sobbing and he's talking to his friend and he's telling us he's no only no he's the only friend he's ever had that he's known since he was a little kid. And it's super sad. Um, it's so sad. It's, it, this is yeah. it, it's really like you actually my heart was really breaking for him because at first when he started crying, I thought that like something happened to the safe and the originals <laughs> and like, like he knew he would be out of a job. I thought that's what was happening. But then when you find out like it was that really one of the rocks in his turbulent life had, had passed. That was so sad. So um, now it's bedtime and Haley is going into the top bunk and Lara's on the bottom. And Haley's like, um, I've been on top bunk on another boat and I just like every time like I wake up and it would hit my head. It was like so crazy. And Lara's like, oh, well, yeah, you're probably going to hit your head on there too. And she's like, oh my God, yeah, most definitely. And then in the other room, Jessica drops her phone charger on Brooke's head. She's like, sorry, I just want you to tell me what to do with this charger. I was going to plug it in, but I just wanted to get some. Uh, some so it's morning time and phone alarm sound. My least favorite sound ever is that fucking iPhone morning alarm. And uh, Luca checks on Rue and uh, Rue's talking about how, I mean, it's still sad. He's just talking about his friend that passed. And then yeah. um, there's a deck meeting. Natalia's telling everybody what to do. And then Brooke and Jess are working on beds. And Jess is like, um, she's scratching the she's sheets scratching. with her fingernails. She's like going, shh, shh. I just hiccuped because I was laughing so hard then. while I drank a soda. <laughs> and Brooke's like, what does that do? And she goes, um, it's supposed to release wrinkles. That's what my friend told me one time. And then she tells us, I'm not a teacher. I'm a follower. <laughs> She's like, she hates being in even the lightest position of authority, having to explain the wrinkle method. Yeah. So, and then Haley upstairs is like, I'm like sweating like a horn church. And Laura goes, What's a horn church? 
<laughs> oh my god, dude. So now it's 37 minutes before charter. Everyone's getting ready, changing into their whites. And uh, Nat's asking Luca for help putting on her apple lads. And now the guys are coming down the deck, or the dock, rather. They're coming down the dock. Yeah. And uh, they're lining up. The captain's like, Chef, you, you're right next to me. This set, Chef, your tongue's hanging out. Mm -hmm. One of your eyes is oh, kind no. of wonky. Oh no, back there. in zombie mode. Oh no, oh, there no. he goes. Chef, start, stop, stop trying to eat my arm, Chef. Stop it. Wake up. He's like, <laughs> oh, here I am, back again. Arms are my vegetables. <laughs> so, so the Doctor Kieran comes on, and Sandy, they're they're hugging and everything, and Sandy goes, "Are you forty years young? So good to see you." Through moisturized eyes, because those eyelids closing all the way. You know what I'm mm. saying? Good to see you. And he's like, you got it. <laughs> it's just like crazy kind of voice laugh. I don't know how to do it. And the captain's like, okay, guys, we're going to launch every toy we can for you. And the crew is going to show you a good time. Okay. Hmm. First game we're going to play is pin the certificate on the bosun. You want to start, Kieran? <laughs> Can't be the copy of the copy. There's a twist. Okay, hold so, on. I'll start first. I'll start first. Let me close my eye. Oops, can st still see out of it. Thanks, Kieran. <laughs> so um, they're bringing the the deckies are bringing the the bags on board, and Rue is like texting his friend about the originals. And uh, then the uh, the guests decide to do a tour. They decide to go into the galley. So Jack is like, welcome to my dungeon. And Dr. Curran is one of these guys who's like, huh, no pressure. But the past couple of days we've been in Italy, we've had about 20 collective Michelin stars. So we're really looking forward to seeing what you can do. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so mean to do that to a chef, obviously. Like, why would like why would you do that to a chef? Why do you That's put him so on? That's fucking like... douchey, dude. Like, congratulations. I've murdered people. That's what I would say in That's... response. Well, just no pressure, but I've killed people. So. <laughs> okay, like, okay, I quit. I'm standing in my galley. Calls. Could you imagine going to like a restaurant and be like, well, I've just had a, been into a lot of Michelin star restaurants, so let's see what this one can do. It's like, you would never do that to a place that doesn't have Michelin stars. He's a douche. So Jack's like, I'm rather excited myself, man. And so he's like, usually I thrive on pressure, but this is seriously squeaky bottom time. All right. So then the captain gets a phone call and it is MCA. Okay. Yeah. And they've been reviewing documents of all the people they have on board. And one, after reviewing them, there are some questions. And she's like, Ruru, lay it on me, MC. Lay it on me. I want to hear something. So they're like, well, we, we have some concerns about, we have some concerns. <laughs> I'm turning Irish. Uh, we have some yeah, concerns. I have no about idea that. how to do that. Actually. I don't, I'm I just like, putting I a place on it. I'm putting a placeholder in it. I don't know it. One document uh, specifically is uh, Yacht Masters. So <laughs> the Yacht Masters, which I love, by the way, that there's a certification called Yacht Masters. It's like Toast Masters, but in yachting. So I'm sure it's like a very high level degree. I'm not making fun of those to achieve the congrats. So, but his. Oh, God, uh, don't Ru get the Yacht Masters after Yacht you. Masters. Well, every, you know, you never, you never know where it's going to come from. It's like, I studied. Listen, I went and I went to SUNY Maritime and I got my yacht masters. So anyway, his yacht masters certification has an issue, Ruse. So Cassandra's like, okay, hey, I'm going to scan it while you're on the phone and I'm going to scan it with my eyes because I can because they just oh, got skin no. on them, on them both. So didn't he and say look. one document is specifically the yacht masters? I think. Yeah, the yacht masters document is messed up. And so she's like, oh, I on thought it. he was saying he stole it from the Yacht Master. Like he ripped off the Yacht Master's document. Oh, but I, I, th I thought it was that there's a certification called Yacht Masters. I'm going to look oh. it up. Yacht oh. Masters. So Yacht she's Masters. like, oh, my God, you've got to be kidding me. This is someone else's picture on Ruan's certificate. This is this is Hannah Banana. Oh, no. <laughs> this is like a whole different level. This is not OK. Hannah's just there smoking a cigarette in the picture. Like, oh, really, There's honey? Another... <laughs> Welcome to Hannah Banana's Revenge, honey. Mm -hmm. There is another person's picture on his certificate. Like, another face. <laughs> like, And I think the guy's face had a mustache. Like, it's a whole... <laughs> other... What are you doing? What is... What is... It's like Fred Flintstone or something on there. 
It was so funny. And uh, she's like, this is a whole nother level. This is not okay. So wait, are you telling me that the entire vessel could be arrested because of one crew member and go to prison? And uh, he's like, you can be detained in port. She goes, oh my God, thank you for bringing this to my attention. I will take care of this immediately, maritime, maritime law. <laughs> so Natalia is calling people to, you know, everybody's going about their business. And Captain calls Rue to the bridge. John, John, John. But before, but then of course, Dr. Kieran interrupts and he's like, hey, where's my captain? So she comes out of a door and she has a coffee and she goes, I need one of these. I think we're departing in an hour. She's like, you think we're departing? I mean, I thought, get on a yacht, go wherever you want. I guess that's not the case. I mean, okay. She's like, yeah, well, you know, I got a con artist on board. Oops, I shouldn't have said that part. But yeah, you're in safe hands, except we're about to fire the fake hands that you were supposed to be in. And now you're going to be in Nolan's hands. Anyway. Yeah, I don't want you to be stressed out, okay? I just had to get a cup of coffee and walk into the walk-in real quick and curse Norma's goddamn name, okay? But uh, we're good now. We're good now. Just go back out there and act natural. Go back out there and talk about how many Michelin stars you've eaten. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, this sweat on my forehead? Oh, yeah, no, that's intentional. I like to spritz myself up oh yeah are my hands shaking oh it's the coffee it's just so much caffeine you know i'm everything's fine everything's totally fine so now she has her meeting with rue who's like oh uh, you were calling me and she's like yeah so the officer just had me scan this is this really you and he's like yeah yeah uh a uh, hundred percent that's me and she goes uh then why do you have hannah banana's face whoever issued this this is not yours and guess what Hannah faked it too, because Hannah didn't have a yacht masters. So where did you go to school, Rue? <laughs> don't uh, don't make don't uh, make a ruse out of uh, it either, Rue. Uh, okay. Well, it was well, it was on a, it was on a boat, and a ticket expired, and we needed a ticket, but we needed a ticket quickly. So a guy came on the boat, and he issued us tickets. I'm like what? <laughs> No, that doesn't no, explain no. why Tony the Tiger is on is on your certification for yacht masters. Yeah, to get this, uh, you have to go to a class. Rule. This is a class. He goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so did you go to school? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's like literally doing scratching his head, picking his ears, looking around. I mean, he's, he's doing a very bad job lying. Very, very bad. Yeah, he literally is. And he is so caught. He like doesn't even have a cover story for his con artistry. And he's like, Pardon? Uh, yeah, yeah. And she goes like, okay. And and uh, you have to be honest with me. I mean, really, like if you did go to a class, he's like, yeah, yeah, I I, I, I did all that. And she's like, where'd you go? Uh, I was in Monaco, Macau, New York City. <sighs> Monaco, we had a uh, practical on a boat in Monaco. And she's like, oh, Monaco. So you can't get your yacht masters in Monaco. Boop, got ya. They don't have a school in Monaco. <laughs> Boom. Big red flag. Okay, you're past red flag. <laughs> you're past red flag. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he couldn't. Let's not forget that he thought the barge was 50 feet away. Okay. <laughs> this is someone who is like, what's the opposite of master? Like yacht derelict. I don't know. Like that's what his certification is in. Yeah, and he's telling us, what does that even mean? I've been on boats for three years with that same ticket. I swear to God, the last thing on my mind is the ticket, is, is, is the ticket being false. Like, everything. I mean, come on. Dude, you have somebody okay. else's face on there. What you? Just go. <laughs> Just say I'm go. sorry and go. He's, so Sandy's like, okay, I have to leave you on the deck, okay? And so we have to, we're going to verify this. And if it's verified, then a tender will bring you back on the boat. But since you're probably a con artist, then you probably won't get on the boat. So unfortunately, we got to move. So go ahead and get yourself off this boat. And, you know, we'll see you sometime. See you later, alligator. You know, it's not you. It's me. All those things. And he's just dumbfounded. And she tells us, you know, I'm a factual person. I'm seeing what I see. And mistakes happen. But uh, I'm not sure that's the case. Either way. I'm without a bosun. I can so she texts Norma. She's like, God damn it, Norma. Could you get me an actual bosun this time instead of using your casting couch off Craigslist? I mean, good Lord. I hope the lay was worth it. Cheese and crackers, woman. You're literally going to be the death of me. Bloop. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Sandy. It's Norma. Listen, um, I'm sorry that didn't work out. I just like to save my good bosuns for the competent captains. Okay. But anyway, there's someone here who just got off work from Starbucks. Do you want me to send them over? Bloop. 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 
Uh, oh, hi there, Norma. Thanks so much for texting me back. Well, you know, when I was texting HR, I was thinking that was human resi- uh, resources, not horrible resources, you goddamn moron. Okay. Bloop. Okay, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to look in my files and see what I can do. Uh, by the way, congrats. Congrats to still being allowed to sail boats on the on the ocean. I thought that for sure that you'd been lost your license ages ago just from just from failing the stupid tests. <laughs> oh, really? So just because I tried to drive one car in the water, you think I'm stupid? You know what? Screw you, Norma. But by the way, P.S. God, it's good fighting with you again. I've missed you, hon. Love ya. Bloop. Love you too. Can't wait to see footage of your boat rocking left and right for no good reason because the air conditioning is tied to the boosters for some <laughs> some maybe th- reason that only you can understand because you're an idiot. Okay, bye, honey. Bloop, bitch. Bloop, bigger bitch. Mm-hmm. So Haley and Lara are in the galley in the galley doing dishes, and Haley's saying, um, "If you were a kitchen appliance, what appliance would you be?" And Lara goes, "Skizza." <laughs> and Haley goes, <laughs> um, that's actually not really an appliance. That's like more of a tool. And then Laura, meanwhile, is like doing the like the scissoring hand gesture. She's just doing it over and over again. And she's like, no, no, I, I, I get I get why you say that. Because <laughs> so that goes gay, not lesbian, but gay. And I like to scissor. So scissoring. They're cracking vagina, up. Vagina. Oh, they used to. And then Laura's napkin slaps her butt. And uh, then we go over to Jack, and Jack's like, make sure you give him th- some of the kale there, girl. I see the guests really like Italian food, and we've got the best tomatoes, the best mozzarella, the best fish. As a chef, I believe the natural beauty will come through. You don't need to fuck about making lamb chops and stuff. Hmm. Is that what he said? Or swans. You don't need to make swans. Swans and ornate things. But I'm going to serve some lamb chops for lunch. So okay, thank you. They, <laughs> they, uh, the guests are cheering, che- doing toasting, cheersing, whatever. And uh, they're serving lunch and everything. But they're still sitting there. The boat's not moving. And um, Naru is calling his friend about the yacht my master. He's like, hey, I need some help with this. Uh, apparently someone figured out that I used Mr. Belvedere on my certification. So do you think you could forge something for me really quickly? Thank you so much. So we still never hear another voice on the end of the phone, which is super fishy, no. I think. So um, the captain's like, okay, you know what? Uh, have the pretty boy come up here, okay? Okay, listen I think here. he's on the second floor. Mm, Luca, okay? Now have a seat, okay? So I've had an incident. Yes, I do have a hole in my eyelid. Just try not to look at it, okay? <laughs> so I have to leave Rue at the dock until he can verify his info, okay? Because I don't know. I'm not sure. But I need an interim bosun, and you're the hottest one. Um, also, the <laughs> other girl, just every time I pass her in the hallway, she just keeps doing scissor scissor fingers at me, so I can't <laughs> I can't really promote her. And the other girl, uh, the other girl she doesn't said- know what a chamois is, <laughs> Yeah, the other girl, she said, hey, take a look at this. It's amazing what they can do with technology. And she was just pointing to a light switch. Then she so. burped in my face. So congratulations, you win. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I have to get this boat off the dock. I mean, I don't have a lot of choices because last I heard, they need this slip for a big, big ship carrying some Genoa salami. Okay. Mm. Salams, as I call it. So Luca's the best choice. Okay. So we're going to go with him. So now uh, lamb lollipops are going around and everyone loves the food. And Jack tells us, right now, all my anxiety is gone and I'm in full blown conference mode. Uh, hold on. Sorry, temporary zombie. Okay, I'm Harry Potter. <laughs> zombie out there. <laughs> I, I got a little zombie. I got real confident and then I became a zombie. But now mm. I'm like Harry Potter and the galley is my Hogwarts. Mm. You're more of a Ron Weasley. I mean, I'm sorry to be the one to have to tell you this. So then um, Nat sends Jess to check on Brooke (laughs) and uh, make sure she's picking up the pace. And now we see that Brooke is just like a total dodo. She's just like, like moving very, very slowly. And so Jess finds her and she's very confused in the main. And Jess is like, so how are you doing today? And Brooke's like, um, I'm not sure how to hang pants. Like, I don't think folding's one of my specialties. And Jessica's like, well, but you know how to fold socks, right? And Brooke is like, um, <laughs> I mean, it's like two pieces of small fabric. 
next to each other. Okay, I'll show you. Know you. Okay, that, I'll right? show you. I'll show you how to do it. And she's like, oh my God, why is Brooke here? She's like so green. Like she's like green on the boat, but she's also green in real life. She's like bright green, like super green. Oh. Which makes sense since she is, we find out, the heiress to the Sprouts dynasty. So it makes sense that she's green. So <laughs> Haley, get, get it. So Haley is asking Rue when they're going to get underway. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're going to leave. We're going to leave soon. Uh, oh, no, he's leaving. He's got to get off the boat. So she's like, oh, my God, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, we just got here. And, like, on top of that, they're putting, like, this fabric in my hair. They want me to, like, wipe surfaces with it. Like, there's just, like, so much going on. <sighs> they just keep telling me to shimmy, and I do. But then they're like, no, clean. I don't get it. So Larry's like, what are you doing? Why are you leaving? And he's like, oh, I'm leaving, but I'm coming back. Okay, bye. And so Definitely then, coming back, because I tell the truth. I'm definitely coming back. Mm. So then uh, the main, Dr. Kieran drops his, or Dr. Kian, sorry, drops his phone in the, the hot Kian? tub. Oh, sorry. And his friend freaks out and like, <laughs> he freaks out and just dives into the hot tub so quickly. It was, I was like, wow, like, you're <laughs> a big kiss ass. This guy's a huge kiss ass, right? I guess, I guess Kian's paying for everything. It. This was like a TikTok video. Like this phone drops and he, this person dove into that hot tub head first. It was like, and then he's like grabbing it. He finally emerges. And then one of the other guys goes, you know, iPhones are waterproof, right? <laughs> so then Adam leaves. By the way, also, the sorry, I keep on saying Dr. Kieran because it is Dr. Kian. And I just, I don't know why I'm saying Kieran. Oh, I wasn't correcting you. I was correcting myself. No, I'm, this, is a, this is a note to the audience. I'm oh. aware. To all the cans out there, guys. Yeah, SARS. So Adam leaves, and Luca's like, um, for someone to walk out in a yacht without original certificates, that's really weird. Like, if you get pulled over by the cops and you show a photocopy of your driver's license, what do you think they're going to do? What do you think they're going to do? Cut to Storm saying, well, I remember when I was since I was six years old and I got pulled over by the police <laughs> because I was driving my mom's car and they said, do you have any identification? I showed them a picture of a rainbow I just made. <laughs> so then um, Lara is scared of her first charter. I'm scared of this first charter and I can't even believe that they're allowed to do it. OK, you've got yeah. a boat. You've got no boats in. You've got Luca, who is not. I mean, admittedly, nowhere even close to being qualified. And then you've got these other two donos who don't know how to do any, literally anything on the ship. I think it's because they have scary. the first officer. They've got the first officer who can basically act as bosun. Because apparently first officer is a higher rank than bosun anyway. I feel like there's yeah. always so much attention put onto bosuns. Like, they're, like, so high up. But apparently on real boats, bosuns are not, like, first officers are really the, the top of, the, of that, that category there. Yeah. So, um, so they're 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 gonna leave the boat. They're gonna leave the dock, and then on top of that, there's a pilot that has to come on because this is actually it. Really, is such a huge port. You know, we're we've seen the show. They will just like dock in some random ass place, like on Below Deck Adventure when they went to like a little fishing town with a yacht. Every boat there was like a canoe, and then they bring their big ass yacht into this port, and it's like tiny. But this one has like cargo ships, like massive massive vessels and cruise ships so this is like a really really big port i think it's actually a little scary personally i feel like that we should not be filming a reality tv show around all these big boats yeah so I it's dangerous um, right what i feel like it's dangerous i feel like we shouldn't have like you know we have we have a girl on here who doesn't even know how to use a chamois we have another one who doesn't even know how to fold socks and we're supposed to have this vessel that is that is equipped with these people navigating around giant cruise ships and and barges that just feels so dangerous yeah it's, it is scary so she's like okay chief engineer please light up our engine mr nico whatever i should have listened earlier when i was making fun of your names and uh, the pilot comes on and lara's like oh fuck here we go and they're releasing the lines and it's really scary and then luca's like oh my god this is so big it's so big oh my god and then i don't want to be the guy that they're like oh my god you just hit the dock <laughs> and he did guess his crazy eyed laugh and then the captain's like what's the speed seven knots and the pilot's like oh my god six knots seven knots seven knots that's the pilot dude oh my you know, god we did it it was great Pilots Super are like, fun. you know, they're like live Google Maps, you know, because they just know all the traffic in the marina. Cut to the pilot being like, in 500 feet, I'm going to make a left turn. Nah. 
In 250 feet, uh, make a left turn, now. Uh. In you 100 turn, feet, uh. Uh, make a left turn, now. Uh. In you 50 turn, feet, uh. it's like, I know Google Maps. You turn, uh, you turn. I can't make a U turn right here. You turn. Uh. I, I can't do it. Why does it keep telling me to make a U turn? You turn. Uh. God, cool maps. Seven minutes slow down ahead. You're still on the fastest route. Uh. Well, then why did you tell me in the first place? I just want you to know. Uh, oh, God, why do you have Google me maps, turn in? If this is supposed to be the slowest route, why do you have me turn in, in front of two over two lanes of traffic? Goddamn Google Maps. <laughs> Oh, rerouting, rerouting. <laughs> so Jack is talking about how he's going to do Wagyu and Lobster for the main course. And um, Luca is uh, talking about water toys and all that. And the, doc the, the doctor, by the way, is having them iron a zillion things for him. This guy's a prick. Yeah. I don't like him. I yeah. don't like this doctor. Fuck this guy. I don't like the doctor either. Um, and then the pilot leaves. Which I thought was cute because he gets on his little boat. I, I, I he, did he like attach his little boat to the boat to the big boat? I think he did because he gets onto his little boat and as he goes off, he goes bye bye. <laughs> 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 it's the equivalent of when our Zoom recorder when you turn it off, it goes see ya. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> that always makes me laugh. So <laughs> now so it's nighttime in Portofino and. Um... Luca is teaching Haley how to call colors on the chain. She's like, but I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And it's like, okay, you'll hear me calling colors, so you'll know when to stop, right? And she's like, hmm. All oh, right. Because okay. when I could say Green. blue, then you stop there, right? She's like, hmm. I'm freaking out on the inside because, like, I have skills. Oh, no. Sorry. Luke, that's <laughs> Luca's line. Never mind. I'm going to back <laughs> off right now. Green. 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 Are you looking at the ankle? Are you looking at the chamois? Oops, the chamois. Uh, I'm freaking out on the inside. I have the skills and I know how everything works, but I've never had to manage a full team. But fake it till you make it. Am I right? Uh, that's just what got Rue fired. That's, that's Too soon. the problem. <laughs> Too soon. It's more like, you know what? I've never done this before. We've got a, the biggest vessel I've ever worked on. I'm massively underqualified. One wrong move and I could send us all to the bottom of the ocean. But you know what, though? I just remembered I'm hot. So never mind. It'll all work out for me. <laughs> um, so now, let's see. The guys are in weird clothes. The doctor is in another hat. He loves his hat. He's a hat person. He does. Mm. And uh, the, we're going to have surf and turf tonight, okay? And the captain's like, wow, Jack, you're doing surf and turf, huh? That's that's something. You know you have a big act to follow, okay? Let's roll the clips of Dave not acting like an insane stalker at all. The only thing that Dave is going to be obsessed with in this clip is mirror glaze. Roll it. Yeah, let's look at three cakes of mirror glaze. Hey, are we, do we have enough room in that montage for G Dave not being able to make one of the simplest things ever, pancakes? No. Okay, that's no, too bad. Okay, no cycle, no cycle footage for Dave. Okay, we'll just stick with Mirror Glaze because I guess he works out <laughs> enough. Okay. <laughs> so um, Sandy's gonna join. She joins for dinner. She's like, "Oh, fancy!" And then this, and then I think Doctor Kean. This was so set up by Sandy. She's like, "You know," she was like, "Hey, when you come on board, please ask me this." He goes, "Hey." You know, none of us know your full story, Sandy. I'm like, that's a lie. She tells her full story every single chance she gets. So she's like, I know. oh, well, if you want to go, shall we begin at the beginning? Ah, uh, okay. So, you know, honestly, this career for me, I feel like it saved my life in, in so many ways. You know, I was a good kid. And then my neighbor, well, gave me a quaalude and that changed my life. And then I was on a drug train and I kept getting arrested, arrested on the train. God, could you imagine? And one day I woke up and it was just another Groundhog Day. I mean, Andy McDowell was literally there. I was like, you do quaaludes too? And she said, no. And then I realized I got to get sober. I just accused Andy McDowell of doing quaaludes. Time for rehab. And so the doctor's like, oh, you, you quit cold turkey then, Sandy. Did you quit cold turkey? <laughs> She's like, no. I didn't. I got help. And he goes, well, that's the important thing. It takes a professional. Kind of like your eye. Show off your eye, Sandy. Show it off. Wink at him, Sandy. <laughs> I did that. Yeah. So Sandy goes, you know, so I answered an ad in the paper to pay my fines and started washing boats. And then I think I just, I had so many chances that now I feel like it's my job to mentor people. So that's what I do. I mentor them and then I fire them. 
<laughs> um, how many chances do you give him, Sandy? How many chances? It's like three. He goes, that's admirable. That's admirable. Three chances. Wow. It's a pretty standard number, guys. <laughs> you can get off the floor. So Haley's like, um, you know what I hate touching? Penises. No, people's food. It's chewed up. It's disgusting. So I do deck work because, like, we've washed all the dishes, but I hate every minute of washing dishes. <laughs> and um, then we just see more food. More food's going out. It all looks really good. And then um, Natalia's giving Brooke orders. She's like, okay, Brooke, this is not complicated work. It's just something, I'm, you know, like, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is Brooke speaking. Excuse me, Natalia's going to step out to the side. I was just, uh, as I was Natalia, I was just temporarily doing Brooke's lines. Now she can take over. So Brooke is like, you know, it's not complicated work. It's just something I've never done before. Like folding socks. Who does that? I would, you know, I would love to be a captain one day, a sockless captain. And my dad was a captain. And he was the biggest motivation in my life. My dad came up with Sprouts Grocery Store. And then she says that her dad died uh, last year, which is really sad. And he told her to do something happy. So she's starting here. So maybe the reason why she can't do socks is because maybe she was like really wealthy growing up. And so she just never had to do it. And now she's like humbling herself by working on a boat. Who knows? Um, so then Jack is decorating. It. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not giving her thought because I don't know if she's permanent. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so rude to say because some people tempt for a living. I used to tempt for a living, and that is how people are. They're like, "Why would I even speak to you? You're not even yeah, gonna be here tomorrow." And I was like, "That really hurt my feelings, you guys." But I do feel that way now about Brooke. I'm like, I don't care. Although I do love sprouts. <laughs> um, I love sprouts too. I'm glad that she she brings sprouts to this table. Here. Yeah. So then Jack decorates his cake, and the doctor is like, <laughs> "I wish I was on a dock in Portofino." <laughs> We did it. Hey, guys. I did it. I got my birthday wish. <sighs> and then um, Natalia's in the galley talking to Jack. She goes, today I had three slices of cucumber. And he's like, that's why you're so skinny. And she goes, no, I swear to God, baby's got back. Like, wait till you see me throw it back on the dance floor. Just wait till you see me do it. I'm like, I'm okay if we don't have to see that. And she's so funny how she says it. She goes, wait till you see me throw it down on the day floor. <laughs> okay so jack's like i like when a chief is supportive of the chef she see she's really impressed me to be honest and then we go to brooke and she's finally finishing the bed and she goes oh my god this bed was my everest <laughs> so, so people then they eat do- cake and natalie's happy yeah. serve it she would give herself a gold star and she hopes sandy gives her one too and now the guys are going to the hot tub while jess is cleaning and jack is talking about um his story he's like thank god it's gone well Woo! i've cooked all around the world i've won the michelin knife and fork award when i was 23 the thing with me as a chef when i've gotten to the highest place in my job I've always left and gone somewhere back to the bottom. Are you sure you left? Or, or <laughs> is this a season of people just faking it? I don't believe you still. So you know, I think me brother was always the sporty one. And me sister was the academic. And I was just a little wrong little child zombie. And so I should be healthy mentally now because, you know, I'm too old to still complain about it. But that need to impress never left me. No. Oh my gosh, you are excellent, chef. Not me or Glaze. God, maybe I'll maybe I'll like him in the future. Well, thanks for thanks for not being Dave. I'm sorry, I just can't find the right words. Really nice job that could have had a mirror glaze on it. You know what? I'm just gonna go to bed. You know what? Let's just end this note on a high, let's end this this evening on a high note because surely nothing could go wrong for me. Okay. Oh, hold on. I got a phone call from from Rue. Yeah, remember he was the guy who used to be on this boat. Okay, I'm sure he has some good news for me. So she answers the phone and Rue is like, "Yeah, I, I don't think I can get the tickets in on time because they don't exist." Oops, sorry. I don't want to hold the vessel up either, so I'm I'm just gonna go home even though I don't know where that home is, but I'm going to go there to wherever it is, and I'm not coming back, so this transmission will explode in 10 seconds. Goodbye. 
And she's like, oh, my God, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> what honesty? He's not said one honest thing. So she's like, you know, Norma's going to pay for this. So then we go to <laughs> Jess and Matt talking. And uh, Jess is like, so did you leave a list for Brooke when she wakes up? She, oh, well, I told her to start laundry, but I'm going to leave her a note. Uh, you know, and I do have an early girl checklist, but it's just going to overwhelm her if we give that to her. She's going to freak her out. And Jess is like, I think you're going too easy on her. Well, if you know, if I have her doing all these things, she's just gonna die. She goes, um, excuse me, we are splitting the same tip. Excuse mm-hmm. you, you're the second Steve who's supposed to be following my instructions. I know, I just, I had to, I had to say that so that way you'd boss me around. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all I needed. Please just boss me around. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, but you know, she's from the dick. And she goes, well, that doesn't mean she's not able to do anything. She goes, yeah, but it's literally her first day yachting. I mean, just needs to chill the fuck out. It's our first night. Brooke is as green as Kermit the Frog. She's brand spanking new to interior. A 55 meter boat should run with four steves and she needs to settle down. I mean, <laughs> you want to fight with me? Let's take it out on the D floor, sister. <laughs> So, uh, meanwhile, um, Luca has questions for Sandy about um, Anchor Watch, and then, uh, which is fine. It just shows he's taking an initiative. And then Haley, uh, yeah, Haley's going to be on Anchor Watch. I don't know. It, it feels like they're setting up like something's terrible. Terrible is going to happen with Haley on Anchor Watch. But um, actually, it's like more or less fine. So, um, uh, Luca's just basically saying he just really is, he's been chucked in the deep end. But um, he's like, I'm worried that I don't know what I don't know. What's it like to be not pretty? Like, I don't know that. That scares me. Hmm. Um, so then uh, it's the morning and um, Lara is sniffing cheese in the galley. And Jack's like, sniff it. You're going to sniff the flavor away. Get away from the cheese sniffer. She's like, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> So then the captain is texting with Norma. She's like, whoa, hey, Norma, you still pretending to do your job over there or what? Hmm. Hey, hey, Captain Sandy. So I saw you don't have a bosun, but you know what? I don't have a fuck to give, unfortunately. So guess what? I'm drinking Margs in Hawaii right now. Hope you're having fun wherever you are eating salams. Bloop. Listen Bloop. here, you dumb slut. I'll take an otter with opposable thumbs at this point. Do your job. Bloop. Bloop. Oh, that otter's been hired to take over Below Deck Adventure, so <laughs> would you be open to just like a stone with a smiley face on it? Bloop. <laughs> oh my gosh, stony smiley people holding hands, am I right? God, do you remember when we danced to that? Here's God, I could stay up all night dancing with you, and I never will again unless you get me a goddamn person who knows what they're doing over here, Sandy. Bloop. I mean, Norma. Bloop. 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 <laughs> You know what? I love that song, Shiny Happy People. I actually feel that song the most when I'm not hearing from you. Bloop. <laughs> Bloop. Are you actually going to do your job today, or can I expect the likes of Meredith Baxter Bernie showing up here with phony papers again? Bloop. <laughs> Bloop. Um, well, you know what? I would take Meredith Baxter Bernie over any one of your hairstyles. Bloop. <laughs> You know what? Every hairstyle I've ever had has actually been called the Meredith Baxter Bernie. Gotcha, stupid. Okay, love you, slut. Bloop. Yeah, I love you too. Hey, I'll send you a postcard from Hawaii. Bye. <laughs> so now the phone rings, and she's like, Norma, you're kidding me. Not for two weeks. Now what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Dun, dun, dun. Oh no, things are going awry. So I guess we'll have to wait to see what happens. But this is definitely a shit show to start the season. At least the boat's working. That we know of so far. <laughs> for now. <laughs> for now. <laughs> Thanks everyone for being here. We really appreciate it. Well, we have a whole slate of recaps coming up later this week. So stick around for that. Be sure to subscribe on our podcast feed. Leave us a review on iTunes, whatever you want to do. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye, everyone. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. 
Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Roo Roo LaRue. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Craftin's ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey 